So before we start the word problems, there was a couple things I wanted to show you from yesterday's notes. So we were on this page. We still need to do number six, so we're going to do that. But I also wanted to show you that three and nine did work. So I'm just going to quickly put that into the calculator. So the answer we got for number three yesterday was 210. I put that into everything with the equal sign on the calculator. It shows a one, so we did that correctly. And then number nine, you would have to put in negative 16 into all of your ends. Can someone read that number nine's uh, equation on the four and Okay, and then equals one point six. And then we also got a one. Um, with things like this, you just have to be careful because you have to add in more parentheses. So just be careful with those. But we did do that correctly. So good. Right. The reason I wanted to wait to do six because there are two different ways to do it. One is dealing with fractions. The other is getting rid of the fractions. I'm going to show you both. If you like one way versus the other, you don't have to write down both. But if you would like both ways, just you can compare. If you ever see a problem like this again, then you have to write this. All right. Um, so first, let's deal with the fractions. So if we were dealing with the fractions, in order to combine these, I need to have uh, the same common denominator. I was going to say this is the wrong word. So these need to be the same. So I need to multiply each of them to something that would get me the same number. What could I make them? So I would have to multiply this side by two. And then what I do to one piece of the graphing, I have to do it to the other. And then I multiply this side by three. Same thing here. So this whole entire thing would change. Now here, your property of equality, we didn't do that because we're not multiplying on both sides. We were just changing the fraction. So we're allowed to do that. Here we have common denominator, so we can make this one big fraction and combine the like terms in our We have 7x. So, so that happens to the six. The six, yeah. So when we add our fractions, we don't add the denominator. They are just the same, so we just come in, or we make them just one. Okay. Then you have so, like we talked about in three the other day or yesterday, we could multiply by six and then divide by seven, or at all at the same time, we could take this and flip it, multiply it by six over seven on both sides. So do that from the together. <clears throat> seven times six over seven. Correct. And then we just want to mental math this. If I put six in here, we have two times six is twelve. Twelve divided by three is four. Six over two is three. Three plus four is seven, so that will work. Or if we put it in the calculator, we will get the one. All right, so that's dealing with fractions. Before we do the other one, do we have questions? Yes. Okay. Do you need to 
Okay, so anytime you are <clears throat> trying to get a number to the other side, or like here we were trying to get P by itself, instead of dividing, um, because really this is the same as seven over six X, this and this are the same. I could take this and flip it, it's called a reciprocal, and multiply it on both sides. That would be the same thing as me dividing by the side. We just don't divide by fractions because it gets messy. Okay. Now I'm going to show the other way. So if you have space on that same page, you can do this there. If you need blank space, I'm trying to keep the right here. I don't need blank space. So if you could go to the next page. <laughs> Rewrite this first. So this would be how we get rid of the fractions. You see them, fractions freak you out, and you just don't want to deal with them. So we get rid of them. So kind of like what we just did to get the common denominators, <clears throat> we want to multiply everything by something these both go into. So that six we did before would work. We multiply everything the higher side by six. But properties of equality, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we have to multiply both sides by six. Now, when we multiply this side, this is going to be like six over one. So you're really just multiplying the six to everything in the numerator, not the denominator. Kind of like you're distributing, but just to the numerator. So right now we still have the fractions, but these can be simplified to what? Plus. Now that they're simplified, we've completely gotten rid of the fractions. Now we can just add and divide. So either way, you would get the same answer. It's just how you would do it. Wait, so now, how do you get six up there? This one? Yeah. So six doesn't have to be the number you multiply. You just have to think of a number that these two numbers would go into. Mm -hmm. And if you multiply to get something, you would end up there. So I could have done 12, 18. 24, it didn't have to be six, but six was the lowest number that would work. So when you do that, it's kind of like, think of a number that works and multiply to both sides. Any other questions on this one before we go on to our word problems? Yes. Is that not? I just multiply these. Okay. Um, also, before we go on to word problems, were there any others on this page that we wanted to do, see, look confusing, we weren't sure where to start, anything like that? Go on to the next page. Um, we're actually going to skip it on here. So this page in here, I keep it in here for if it helps you use it. I'll explain this first line, but we're not going to like read each line. So this would be more so if your equation looked like this. Um, there wasn't a whole lot going on, not parentheses, my answer, any of that. So this is like your standard two-step equation. If you have a two-step equation, then this works. So the steps relate to this. Pick a number is your variable. Then you multiply it by seven. So this is explaining how we set up the equation. Add by the result is 20. So this explains how we got this equation. Then the answer takes that and flips it. It's saying how you start to solve it. 
So we start with the result of 26. We subtract 5 to both sides, which is what those are doing over here. Then we divide both sides by 7. So what is the number is trying to figure out what is your answer. So if these kind of help you process and say, what should I be doing next? You could use those. Bless you. Thank you. The check part is doing exactly what it says here, starting with 26, subtracting 5, dividing by 7. So what is the number? Would it be 3? And then the check part is just putting this back in to see does this work. So if that helps you, use it. If that was confusing, ignore everything I just said. But go to this page. Right. Um, I keep meaning to check if this one is a no calculator or not. I don't remember. Um, I will check that to have that answer for you tomorrow. But so we've talked about solving multi step equations. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow because there's more to deal with that. So that's your first objective. This is your last objective real world problems, but it kind of goes hand in hand with multi step. So when we have real world problems, we want to do circle, um, highlight, underline, star, whatever that you feel is important. So let's read through this first one first. Um, let's have to come back to this one. Let's do number two, because this one's a little bit more complex. And then we'll circle, highlight anything that you feel is important. So read this along with me. To mail a first class letter, the U.S. Postal Service charges a flat rate of 53 cents and 18 cents for each ounce. It costs $2.69 to mail your letter. How many ounces does your letter weigh? So of that, what do you feel is important? Two point eighteen. Okay. And I'm going to go even further for each ounce. That part is important. It costs $2.69. Okay. I'm going to highlight the words of flat rate. Think about that in a second. Right, so anytime you see numbers, those are important. If it gives you a variable, this one doesn't, but if it did, that would be important. Um, words like flat rate, each, whatever, those are important. I'll just combine here in a second. And then, of course, whatever the question is asking, those are all important things. So we should be circling, highlighting, underlining, whatever is important. That way, when you get your word problems, you know to do the same thing. So when we talk about a flat rate, this is going to be, even if your letter doesn't weigh anything at all, they're still going to charge you 53 cents because they have to make money somehow. So no matter what, they're going to charge you that 53 cents, whether it weighs 100 pounds or zero. Then for each ounce, so usually when you see for each for the word per, P-E-R, this is going to go right next to whatever this variable. So then we multiply. Because if I knew how much it costs for each whatever, every time I add another ounce, I'm going to add another 18 cents or whatever. This would be your total. We're looking for a number of ounces. So the very first thing we have to do after we find out important things is define our variable. I would avoid using O because you might confuse it for zero, but X, anything else is fine. And when we define our variable, we have to be very specific. We can't just put ounces. We need to know what don't we know about the ounces. What are we looking for? So we have to wait how many ounces. So we could say number of <laughs> ounces or the weight. Either or. So anytime we define our variable, it should be number of, cost of, whatever. Now that we have a variable, we can start to put this in some sort of equation. 
So if nothing else, you can always start with the total. It's going to equal to 16. If we're thinking total, so now we're thinking back to our translating, what operation are we doing between everything? Are we subtracting for a total or is that addition? So we're going to end up adding these two things together. And then the point, it doesn't really matter where you put these for now. We need both. And the X would go with group one. Mm -hmm. So now we've translated our word problem into an equation. And now we can solve that equation. Well, why did they have to call it? So because this word each, the number of ounces has to go with that. So now let's solve. What would be our first step? Subscribe. Do that something to get. Okay, and then our last step. <laughs> Do that from what you get. Okay, and I'm glad you said ounces because also just like we specified for our variable, we have to specify our labels. So we can't just put 12 because my response, if you were to put that on a quiz or a test, would be 12 what? We need to be specific, 12 ounces. Do we have any questions on that one? Now we're going to go back to view number one, but this is similar but different at the same time. So now this is talking about the length of a rectangle. So we're dealing with, you, you kind of have to have some knowledge of what a rectangle is, how to look like, and perimeter. So the length of a rectangle is three inches more than the width. The perimeter is 30 inches and the dimensions. So here, what do you feel is important? Okay. Three inches. And I'm going to highlight that entire part, three inches more than the width. What is that talking about? Perfect. What about the rectangle? So this goes with us. Right? And then we are looking for the dimensions. That means we're looking for the length and the width. Now, in this case, we're going to have two variables <laughs> the length and the width. You can call them L and W. In this case only, you don't have to define them because it kind of tells us that's what it is. Or you don't have to be more specific. This is the curse of L. All right. So when we do this, one, we're really going to have like two equations. One is going to be how we find the perimeter. So first, let's talk about how we find the perimeter of a rectangle, or in general, how do we find the perimeter? This area. Adding. Adding. So usually you would add up all the things. <laughs> Did you do that? L plus L plus W plus W. Or you could use this. Perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width, which is the same thing as adding up all the sides. So either or does not matter. Can I use the restroom? Yes, give me one second and then I'll um, make the test. So this is going to be one of our equations we use. We know the perimeter is 30. 
So we can start to write some sort of equation that looks like that. <laughs> But we also have to come up with this equation about the length. Because it says the length is, that means the length equals three inches more than the width. Or right now. But where do you got those two two from? Say that again. Where do you got the two from? This is just the equation of the perimeter. What is three oh. plus w? Mm -hmm. All those translating scales are coming back. So now that we know the equation for length, we're going to take this and kind of like when we were evaluating, we were substituting specific numbers. We're going to substitute this equation in for L. So we're going to rewrite this so that it looks like 30 equals 2 in parentheses 3 plus W plus 2 this. So what happens is whatever you put in, whatever the length equation is, the L goes away and you just have one variable, which is what you want because if you're solving through multiple variables, it gets confusing right now. Right? Do we have questions so far? Now that we have our equation, we can start to solve. So what would be our first step? Yep. So distribute, multiply the two to everything. And honey, you can go to the back. And then. Like the length of the sword. Mm -hmm. Add them together. So we have 30 equals 6 plus 4w. Make sure you're not multiplying this to the floor as well. Six. And then divide, and W would be what? Six what? Six. Inches. Inches. So that's one part. Remember, it's like find the dimension. So we still gotta go back and find length. But if we know our width and we have an our we have an equation for length, we can put that back in. Length three inches more than the width. But you would need to show this for it. So if I were to put nine and six back in this, we should get 30. So two times Nine is 18, two times six is 12, 18 plus 12 is 30, that works. I wanna do one more of these type and then I'm gonna have you practice one more of these. Go to the next one. But this is not there. And then the back of this section, where the perimeter question. <laughs> so these are all similar to that question we just did. I'll let you guys choose nine, ten, or eleven. Which of those would you like to learn? Someone said an answer, but I just didn't hear what you said. Which of these would you like to try that? All right. 
So same as before, let's read through to find important things. The length of a rectangle is five inches more than four times the width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 90 inches, find its dimension. So what's important here? The length, what about the length? What about the length of it? There we are. Anything else important? We're looking for the beads. Right? So before we started with the perimeter equation, that will always be the same type, sorry, uh, the same type of equation for each. So this time let's start with the length. Um, sorry, I forgot to put a little over here. All right, so if the length of a rectangle is five inches more than the width, how would we write that equation? Yes. Think about how would we write that equation? What number is that? And it's like the last. Say it again. Five inches more than four times the width. Uh, four times the width. Correct. Four times the width. Yes. Okay. Now, whether you want to. Do you want to trade into the perimeter with that in or write it first and then rewrite it is up to you? So I'm going to start off with the 90 equals 2L plus 2W. And then where would this go? In this here, where the L is. And then start this off. For distributing, we should have 10 plus 8W and then plus the 2W on the end. Make sure you're bringing down those things because if you leave off the 2W, your answer is going to change. Combine your left terms. What is the width? Eight. 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 Eight inches. Eight inches. There we go. Okay. And then how do we find the length? Times four. So eight times four. Eight times four and then add five. Thirty-seven months. Thirty-seven months. Right. So there are two others that, in your own time, you can be practicing those to make sure you are doing those. I believe in the adult math there's at least one or two of those as well. Right. As long as you remember to go step by step. Do your perimeter, find your equation, your length equation, put the length equation into your perimeter and then solve, you should be fine. <laughs> Do we have any questions about your length and perimeter questions? This will be the last thing we do today. Go back to pages. Or wherever the word problem is. <laughs> I want you to be trying to do three. You guys can work together. Um, 
by yourself, up to you. Notice that this has multiple parts. It's asking different things for each part. It tells you your numbers up here. This part A is just for the blue, part B is just for the red, and then C, make sure you're paying attention to what it's you have questions or need my help, let me know. Work together, use your notes. Oh, really fast, before I forget. You can use Desmos, but in the future, you should be trying to work. Because I wanted to show this an N, that way you know how to solve, but also know how to check yourself in Desmos. So when you have any equation, I'm just going to take one from this page. If I type in this equation, 3x minus 2 equals 4. It's going to give me a straight line. Wherever that straight line ends up on your x-axis, that's your answer. So when checking yourself in Desmos, put in the entire thing, look and see where you end up. If you're doing your work and you see that your answer doesn't match, the two would be your answer. Double check your work. Would be X. That would be your final answer. Yeah. So you've done those. Use your calculator. Use your notes. Try number three. And then if we have time, we'll go over that today. If not, we'll go over it tomorrow.